Good morning. It is good to see you at the Lord's house for our worship this morning. In your pew, please look around. You should find this little black booklet. It's a friendship register. Everybody who needs to fill that out, so please, uh, those that are closest to the middle aisle, take it and pass it to your wife to have them fill out the information and then pass it along to those other ones who are sitting in the pew with you. If you happen to be on one of the ends, please get up and try to find it, grab it from this end. As we prepare our hearts for the coming of Jesus, we have rallied to very specific places that the Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah has pointed us to. But as children would love to do on fresh, powdery, bright, sparkly snow, this morning we have the opportunity ourselves to romp through the Bible, especially the Old Testament. And one final preparation because, believe it or not, Christmas is a week away. So today we have a service of lessons and carols and hymns uh, for Advent as we prepare our hearts finally for the celebration of Jesus' birth. The service is again printed for you in the service folder. One of the remarkable opportunities we also have besides hearing the promises of God are also seeing some wondrous treasures of music that we have in the church throughout the century. So please watch carefully as you sing the hymn and how they match up with the lessons that we're reading today. We also have the choir and bells singing with us today as, uh, as a part of the service too. We'll take the offering as we sing hymn number 24 when we come to that point. And then finally as we come to the end we will offer uh, two special prayers today. We continue to pray for Mike Radke, uh, a, a gentleman that is joining our church going through the adult confirmation class right now. He still is admitted in the burn unit at UW-Madison Hospital and we continue to pray for, uh, pray for his quick recovery. We also pray for the family of Tammy Steiner, whose father, Pastor Harry Weedman, passed away this past week. The funeral was yesterday. We'll pray for comfort for the family as well as Thanksgiving for the blessing of the church that Pastor Weedman certainly was. Let's begin our service with the opening responses. And him, please stand. O oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Behold, the King comes. Let us worship him.
Dear people of God, in the season of Advent, it has been our responsibility and joy to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels, to go to Bethlehem and see the Son of God lying in a manger. Let us hear and heed in Holy Scripture the story of God's loving purpose from the time of our rebellion against Him until the glorious redemption brought to us by His child, Jesus. And let us look forward to the yearly remembrance of His birth with hymns and songs of praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of His whole world, for peace and justice on earth, for the unity and mission of the church for which He died, for the people in our country and in the city, and especially for the brothers and sisters in our synod and in our own congregation. And because he particularly loves them, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and unloved, and the aged and the little children, as well as those who do not know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, let us praise God for the faith of Mary, mother of our Lord, and that whole multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the Word made flesh, and with whom, in Jesus, we are one forevermore. To sum up all these petitions, let us pray as Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ. Give us the joys of everlasting life. And may the King of Angels bring us all to the fellowship of the citizens above. Amen. Please be seated.
When we finally arrive at Bethlehem at the manger, we may wonder in our hearts, where did this story start? For that, we have to go to the very beginning. And a promise that God made to destroy sin and destroy the devil. As we come here to Genesis 3, though, we also have the opportunity to see something of ourselves. When Adam and Eve sinned and cast the world into sin, we are a part of this. As we come to the manger, we realize this. And we must. If we come to the manger not understanding why Christ is born, we may as well not come at all. We must come longing desperately to find a Savior from sin because we realize our own sin. The first lesson is from Genesis chapter 3. Adam and Eve heard the voice of the Lord God who was walking around in the garden during the cooler part of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? The man said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate it. The Lord God said to the woman, What have you done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the livestock and more than every wild animal. You shall crawl on your belly and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. I will put hostility between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He will crush your head. You will crush his heel. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Let us join to sing the next hymn, hymn number 28 in the hymnal. Let the earth now praise the Lord. <clears throat>
interesting that the Old Testament is all bad, like down, like everything is just evil. And that all the Old Testament is about is about God's law and God's judgment, but there is marvelous gospel treasure throughout all the Old Testament and these promises of the coming Christ. Often the prophet Isaiah is referred to as the fifth evangelist. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then Isaiah, the evangelist of the Old Testament, because his promises of the coming Messiah are fully packed with his amazing work. Isaiah had a really remarkable way of showing how when Messiah comes, he changes things. He literally turns the world upside down, so you find things that aren't supposed to be like the way they are. Like you hide water in the desert and plants where there's supposed to be nothing but deadness. We take to heart these marvelous promises and bury them and ponder them and realize the fullness of what Messiah has come to bring us. The reading is from Isaiah 35. The wilderness and the dry land will be glad. The desert will rejoice and blossom like a rose. It will blossom abundantly and there will be great joy and singing. Lebanon's glory will be given to it. It will be excellent, like Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make feeble knees firm. Tell those who have a fearful heart, be strong. Do not be afraid. Look, your God will come with vengeance. With God's own retribution, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind will be opened. The ears of the deaf will be clear. The lame will leap like a deer. And the tongue of the mute will sing for joy. Waters will flow in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool. And in the thirsty ground there will be springs of water. Grass, reeds, and rushes will be in the haunts where the jackals once lay. A highway will be there, a road, and it will be called the Holy Way. The unclean will not walk there. It will be for those who walk in that way. Wicked fools will not wander onto it. No lion will be there, nor will any ravenous animal go up on it. They will not be found there, but the redeemed will walk there. Then those ransomed by the Lord will return. They will come singing to Zion. An everlasting joy will be on their heads. They will obtain happiness and joy. And sorrow and sign will flee away. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The bells will play our next hymn. But the words of the hymn are printed for you to consider as you hear them play.
A reading from Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort. Comfort my people, says your God. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem and call out to her. Her warfare really is over. Her guilt is fully paid for. Yes, she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice is calling out. In the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make level in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low. The crooked ground will become level and the rough places will become a plain. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all flesh together shall see it. Truly the Lord's mouth has spoken. A voice is saying, call out. And I said, what shall I call out? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like a flower in the field. Grass withers, flowers fade when the breath of the Lord blows upon them. Surely the people are grass. Grass withers, flowers fade, but the word of our God endures forever. Get up on a high mountain, O Zion, you herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, you herald of good news. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold, your God. Look, God the Lord will come with strength, and his arm is ruling for him. Look, his reward is with him, his recompense is before him. Like a shepherd, he will tend his flock. With his arm... He will gather the lambs. He will lift them up into his lap. He will gently lead the nursing mothers. Gently. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Let us join to sing hymn number 12 in the hymnal. Hark the glad sound, the Savior comes. It's not as if the donkey just happened to stumble into Jerusalem, or I'm sorry, Bethlehem, or that Mary and Joseph just pulled off on exit 185 because there was in there. They're in Bethlehem. 
Because God said so. When we consider this promise and prophecy and its fulfillment, we see how God just works with His divine finger such marvelous and miraculous details into our salvation. Bethlehem is no accident. It's the city of David, but it's not where the king is. He's in Jerusalem. And the humble beginnings of our Savior are going to be quite important. The peace that he is going to bring us. A reading from Micah chapter 5. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come the one to be ruler in Israel. His goings forth are from ancient times, from eternity. Therefore he will surrender them until the time she who is in labor gives birth to a child. Then the remainder of his brothers will return to the children of Israel. He will stand and shepherd with the strength of the Lord and the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. They will dwell securely. For at that time he will be great. To the ends of the earth. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Let us join to sing hymn number 65 in the hymnal, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
some seasons and celebration of our church here features specific songs. At Easter, the song is Alleluia. At Christmas, the song is Gloria. In Advent, the song is Hosanna. Desperate plea from the sinner, Lord, save us. We expect that's what he's going to do when he comes. But now there is another day of our Lord Jesus' life, which Hosanna is the featured song. I'll give you a moment just to think about in your mind what day that might be. The other day the song Hosanna is sung, Lord save us, is Palm Sunday. The king comes riding into Jerusalem. He comes as a child in the manger. The king is coming. And sinners desperately plead, Lord, save us. That's what the child comes to do. And that's exactly what Jesus is riding into Jerusalem to do on Palm Sunday. But then Hosanna becomes that glorious battle cry. The glorious battle that lay ahead of him of his suffering and death for our sins. As we celebrate Christ's coming, we see a distant cross from the manger knowing that he has come to live perfect righteousness for us and to die to take away all of our sins. The promise and prophecy of Palm Sunday is found in Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and brings salvation. He is humble and riding on a donkey on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow will be taken away and he will proclaim peace to the nations. His kingdom will extend from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will release your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners, who have hope this very day, I declare that I will restore double to you. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Let us sing the hymn printed in the folder, O Bride of Christ, Rejoice. <coughs>
so we have come the months and weeks before the birth of our, our Savior. And as we look at the next two lessons, we look at all the other characters involved. The parents of John the Baptist, the Baptist himself. We think of Mary and Joseph and how God, how God intervened in history and said, You and you and you are going to be a part of this. And we thank God that he didn't point that finger at us for any of these responsibilities. But as we set our hearts in the coming week in the celebration of our Savior's birth, we do have the opportunity, as God points the finger at us and say, you, to consider our faithfulness. <coughs> Ask ourselves, what are we going to do? And what's most important for us when Christ is born? A reading from Luke chapter 1. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a certain priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife was from the daughters of Herod, and her name was Elizabeth. They were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and righteous decrees of the Lord. They did not have a child because Elizabeth was unable to bear children. And they were both well along in years. On one occasion, while Zechariah was serving as priest before God, and his division was on duty, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. The whole crowd of people were praying outside the temple during the hour of the incense offering. An angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and overcome by fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear a son for you. You are to name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, because he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to drink wine or beer. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. He will turn many of the sons of Israel back to the Lord their God. He will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and to turn the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to prepare a people who are ready for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How can I be sure of this since because I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. The angel answered him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and was sent to speak to you in order to tell you this good news. Now listen, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day when these things happen, because you do not believe my words, which will be fulfilled at the proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering what was taking him so long in the temple. When he did come out, he was unable to speak to them. Then they realized that he had seen a vision in the temple. He kept making signs to them and remained unable to speak. When the days of his priestly service were completed, he went back to his home. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived. She kept herself in seclusion for five months, saying... The Lord has done this for me in the days when he looked with favor on me and took away my disgrace among the people. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Let us sing hymn number 43 in the hymnal. To thee my heart I offer. <laughs>
A reading from Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin pledged in marriage to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But she was greatly troubled by the statement and was wondering what kind of greeting this could be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, because you have found favor with God. Listen, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? The angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, See, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. And the angel left her. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is hymn number 24 in the hymn of the angel Gabriel from heaven came. At this time we'll gather an offering. If you haven't done so, please take a moment to fill out the friendship register. <laughs> Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Take away the burden of our sins and make us ready for the celebration of your birth, that we may receive you in joy and serve you always. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and compassionate Father, in your mercy you transform even sickness and disease into blessings for your children. 
With this confidence, we commit all who are sick and suffering to your tender care. We bear to your throne in mercy those on our hearts and our minds. We pray especially for Mike Radke. Provide healing and relief according to your infinite wisdom and your boundless mercy. Grant him patient endurance. Help him find true spiritual strength through Jesus and his cross during this time of weakness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, teach him to trust in your forgiveness, grace, peace, and love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, head of the church and chief shepherd of your flock, it has pleased you to call Pastor Harry Weedman from this earthly life to heavenly glory. While many mourn his death, we rejoice together in the eternal victory he now shares with you. We thank you for the many blessings you poured out on your servant in his life, for bringing him to baptismal faith, for preserving him in that faith, for giving him the joy of publicly proclaiming your word and administering your sacrament. You kept him faithful to your word and made him a blessing to your church. Grant now a special measure of comfort to his family as they mourn his loss and give healing to their sorrowing hearts through the precious assurance of your word. May the time of death remind us all of the frailty of human life. And may your Holy Spirit ever keep before us the goal of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the expectation of the coming of your one and only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Grant that we who with joy receive him as our Redeemer may without fear behold him when he will come to be our Judge, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain upon us forever. Amen. Please be seated. Let us sing hymn number 23. O come, O come, Emmanuel. 